Hi, I'm Dacre Montgomery, and you're watching In Studio with The Hollywood Reporter. We were talking a little, a few minutes ago, about you being a fan of the show, yeah. um, of season one, and then you got cast um, for season two as Billy. You sent in an audition tape. Can you sort of talk about, was that your idea? Or, yeah. yeah, I just got it, and I did it in the day that I received the email about doing an audition, and... I kind of thought I needed to be able to stand out, you know, because the show was already such a huge hit uh, three months post the release of the first season or whatever it was. And then uh, kind of went all out. Um, but I believe in taking risks and it's a competitive business. And, um, you know, I, I like that I took an artistic lead big risk, I yeah. guess, in, in many ways. Part of that was... Uh Kiefer Sutherland's um, a bit yeah. from Stand By Me, yeah. is that right? Yeah. One of my favorite movies. And um, and yeah, that was, it's kind of, I feel like Billy has a little bit of that in him. Was that one of your influences when you were sort of like crafting? Totally. Yeah, well, I think when they had given me that scene, they hadn't obviously written a, too many, a huge amount of scenes for Billy yet. So they gave me, the other scene was from the script, with what, what became the, the, the car scene with Max in the show. Um, and then the other scene was obviously Stand By Me. And I think there were certain qualities. I was given a lot of Jack Nicholson's kind of career, I guess, to look at in general. I think he makes unusual, unpredictable choices that keep the audience on edge, and I was encouraged to do something similar. But the Duffers are great. I think I don't really believe in copying someone else's performance, so they were great about building a new character from scratch. Um, and building the arc right from season two through three, even when I started discussing the whole kind of course of Billy's journey right up until the end of the season you will have all just finished watching. So you knew from the beginning that this was going to be his arc, basically. Is mm. that right? And his end. Oh, and his end. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Totally. What kind of expectations did you have going in, and, and what was the experience actually like for you as a fan of something to then be part mm. of it? I think you have to separate yourself in some way from the fandom portion in the world so you can contribute to the story in a real way, do you know what I mean? Like separating yourself um, in some way, shape or form. In terms of the actual experience, it was fantastic. I mean, that's it. It's such a tribute to the Duffers being such collaborative artists. That's why the show is so successful, I think, in many ways. Yeah. There's a sort of handcuffs feel like they're off and you feel free and you feel like you can create and it evolves as you go through the process rather than feeling like it's concrete from screenplay you know, through to post. It doesn't feel concrete. It feels like it's ever moving and changing. And I think I admire Netflix for being a new relatively company that is able to give their artists that outlet to be able to change throughout the process. I admire that. Yeah. Um, so it's better than my expectations. And, uh, and, this, and you were asking me before about watching it, can you separate yourself? I think you can because I think as a lover of film and television, a cinephile, my, when I look at product, I look, the best film and TV is something that successfully creates escapism for me. And I think this show is able to do that and that's why I'm able to separate myself. Even though it's an ensemble cast and there's different storylines happening, I'm able to separate myself because of the cinematography and the score and everything is just so fully realized, I think. Yeah, I think that's what makes it what it is. It's what so Stranger good. Things it's is, so yeah. special. Yeah. And I know Billy's kind of like a bad guy, um, but he, I found in season two, I found him really refreshing. Because um, okay. we, we kind of, I mean, we had Steve in season one, and but it's totally different, you know, it's like a very different type of character. But yeah. if you're going to have some sort of archetype of some form of like, you know, the bad guy or antagonist or whatever, yeah. um, but I still found it refreshing and... Um, and then especially towards the end of season two, when you sort of understand why he is the way he is, you know, the scene with his dad and yeah. everything, that that was uh, really eye-opening for the character. Um, did you know that also in the backstory? It wasn't written. I actually asked the Duffers, I said, he can't be bad because he's bad, like we're all human beings, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I was interested in humanizing the villain, and they'd spoken a lot about that. And they wrote that scene after we'd already shot episode four. They wrote that into the script after I had that conversation with them. I love that. Um, and I think it was really good because no, there's, you know, what we're interested in is the gray area between good and bad. That's what's interesting, right? That's what drama spawns from for me. And, but I don't feel like there is, like we're all human beings and I think sometimes the question is, well, 
how do you separate yourself and play that character that's such a bad person and I think well there's qualities of that person in me and vice versa and I think it's about finding empathy for the character that you play no matter what it is and that's how you can humanize the villain which was a quote that I think you know Stephen King had once given that the duffers had refreshed to me a lot throughout the shooting process in season two. How do you expect fans are, are going to be reacting now after season three and is it sort of similar do you think to season two or do you even uh, do you get fan like do you, do you hear about fan reactions to your character? Not a huge amount I'm not great with social media yeah. and all those sort of outlets um, <laughs> but I but I am interested to sort of see how they'll respond. Yeah. Um, I'm excited. I, I thought it was a great season, even though we see Billy immersed in this fantastical kind of sci-fi component this season. Mm -hmm. I tried it to treat it like, so he's possessed, right? He's Billy the Flayed or whatever. But I tried to, I did a lot of study on people with bipolar and split personality disorder and how one personality has the spot and control over the, the being yeah. and how the other personality can be suppressed. And in this season, I try to treat Billy like a lackey band, and he's so taut and torn. And I tried to play the flayed Billy in my physicality and the real Billy behind the eyes. Mm -hmm. And at the end, we see that lackey band snap. And I think yeah. it's actually a really redemptive ending and a really fantastic payoff for the character. And I'm lucky that I had that arc. I'm lucky to be a part of the series. Yeah, because it's also, you know, it's a little sad um, in the first couple of episodes when you see, like, Billy with Mrs. Wheeler at the pool and he sort of pushes her away. So you can tell, you know, there's that human side to him who totally. doesn't, you know, at first you have this flirtatious thing, which mm. we could also talk forever about Billy and Mrs. Wheeler. Um, I won't do that to you, though. Uh, but, uh, but, yeah, you can tell it's just, you know, there's this very innocent woman and then also with Max, you know, there's a scene um, where he's talking to her, so it's like there, you can tell that there's that struggle totally. um, inside him, but um, I kind of also want to go back a little bit um, because I, I found out you've been acting basically your entire life, right? Well, I've been or, given in a red hot go, but I don't know if I've, been, <laughs> I've been lucky of late, yeah. but yeah, I had a long time where I was given um, a red go. When was it that you wanted to, to be an actor? What Do you remember what, um, was it a movie or? Both my parents work in the film industry and I grew up on set and uh, I don't know, I, I think I fell first in love with the adrenaline of a film set. It's like a family, you know, 14 hours a day every day and you just like, you live for that, there is nothing else. And then I fell in love with escapism, which is what I touched on earlier. My dad used to take me to films and just being, finding films on occasion that f took me places that don't exist, I was fascinated by. And then I told my parents, look, I want to be in front of the camera. And luckily I had really encouraging parents who for that 10 year period when I didn't book anything and I was wanted to go to acting school and so on and so forth, they helped me and paid for everything and, um, mm. and stuck it out, you know, and I think a lot of families might think, look, now it's time to move on and try something else. Oh. Um, well, they probably understand, you know, sort of what you're going through since they are part of the film industry. They're like, totally. you know, this is, if this is what you want to do, this is what it entails, and they, have, they probably have a little bit more of an understanding than most parents, yeah. you know? Yeah, I was like, lucky. Yeah, 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 yeah totally. Because, um, yeah, you went to, like, proper drama school also, yeah, right? In Australia. Yeah, I was, yeah. that, I was The first piece of luck, I guess, that met the preparation was getting into school, and yeah. I had a lot of growing up to do. I think if I had booked a role before I got into university, I think I would have really messed up my chances. Um, so it was good. Your, your chances at what? I don't know, having a real shot at a career and being really mature and motivated, and I don't think I had work ethic that I do now in the mm. same way. You okay. fell in love, you, you know, you learn, you, you know, have a heart broken, a bit of everything, and I think yeah. that's all important in terms of growing up, and I think if I can take that elevated kind of life experience or emotional maturity into my work, then, you know, I think it's it's an important thing to come into this industry with a good head on your shoulders and keep your family and friends around and keep humble and yeah. focused, you know, and read everything under the sun and be really particular about what you pick every, you know, opportunity you're given and every next step you take in this industry. And yeah. I'm so excited to finally sort of be given an opportunity. Yeah. And now what goals do you have uh, now, now that you're, you know, post Stranger Things world, uh, what, are you, what are you looking forward to, I guess, for um, your career? Yeah, I, I'm doing a romantic comedy next, which is a big kind of risk for me. I think I'm very scared of comedy. I love to watch it, but I'm scared to play it. The pace yeah. is different from drama. The world is different. I think it's a really good ego stripping exercise, this next movie I'm going to be taking part in. 
um, to take the piss out of myself a bit, I think, to not take myself so seriously. Yeah. And really unburden myself of that insecurity, I think, in a way, is really important. Um, I've been working on a podcast for two and a half years, which comes out next week. Is that the spoken word? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. really random, but um, <laughs> very exciting. And I had all this beat poetry that I compiled over the years and um, had all these amazing musicians come together and compose scores and um, and I narrate it. And, uh, so that's been really cathartic as well. I don't mean to get too kind of meta about this, but you know, it's it's, it's been okay. it's been a good eye-opening experience too. And I think Stranger Things has been fantastic because it's opened up avenues, you know, mm -hmm. even just to use a, like a quite a millennial example, like, uh, you know, Instagram to be able to, to access all these people around the world, like a plethora of different artists, mm -hmm. musicians. You know, I, I don't I don't know the music world other than being a fan. I don't I don't have any stake in that world. And to have these musicians open up their hearts and kind of go. It's really random. This Australian guy is sending me this content. And he wants me to compose X, Y, and Z to it. But I've ha it's been re people have been really receptive, and I'm lucky about that because there are a lot of far more talented people in me that, than me in the world who don't get those kind of opportunities. Yeah. You know. What was maybe a challenging scene for you playing? Because it's also pretty physical. I mean, even in just the first or second episode, I think is yeah. where you're getting sort of like dragged down those stairs and into yeah. that basement. Um, was the physical stuff challenging for you? And if not, what what was? <laughs> I love the physical stuff. I love learning from the stunt guys. I think they're incredibly talented athletes yeah. and they're so particular about where everything should be and the timing of everything. And I think it's an art form in itself. Um, I just saw John Wick three not to go off topic this is <laughs> no you're fine <laughs> um, and uh, uh, yeah so I'm a big fan of kind of really getting stuck into that sort of stuff um, there's an ep there's a scene in episode four in the sauna and it's a hugely physical and emotional scene um, halfway through the season um, and I took all my prosthetics and my wig and everything off at the end of the uh, at the end of the week of shooting that scene and I was covered head to toe in cuts and bruises and I took all the skin off the top of my toes and mm. I mean, just kind of invest in it. So much fun yeah. in, in a lot of ways. And um, I just, yeah, I find new things to fall in love with about this every day. Okay. Well, speaking of your prosthetics, um, we interviewed, uh, one of my coworkers interviewed Gaten, yeah. and uh, he was saying that it's not fair, I think, that you have to, <laughs> that you had a <laughs> yeah, hair some piece. Of the, yeah. He had to grow his hair out yeah. like naturally, and you got a head piece. A lot of them have to live with yeah. it, yeah. Even when they leave set, everyone's living with it. It's good I can put on a hat and grow a beard and... Yeah. You know, whereas you can see Joe Keery from a mile away <laughs> facing the other direction. He's just, you know what <laughs> That's I mean? That's true. What's a favorite scene of yours? Um, the final scene. Yeah, okay. Between Millie and I at the end, I yeah. really enjoyed. How long did that take? Three days. Oh, yeah. gotcha. So much fun. Huge set component, huge CGI component. Yeah. And then what's it like when you step off the set? at the end of that last... I think you have to be able to strip it, you know what I mean? Sure. If you've got a partner to go home to or friends or family, I feel like you can't take that kind of energy back. Yeah. That's what I mean by empathising, finding empathy for the character or similarities. So you can leave and kind of... I remember I had this, you know, uh, super kind of eccentric uh, drama teacher at university and she used to say, like, what? pretend you're washing water over your face. And I was at school, I was like, oh, such like drama or whatever but and then I get off set and I'm like ah, I sit in the car on the way home and I'm imagining like the water running down my head and it's kind of oh. nice you know what I mean yeah because you have such long days I don't I feel like that short time when you see your partner or whoever you yeah. can't kind of bring it back we've all enjoyed watching you, Thank you. as Billy you seem like a, a great super talented actor Thank you. really Appreciate excited it. to see where you go from here thank you so much for being here Thank, thank you. you guys all for watching